symmetric sapphire model and as the name suggests symmetric it is going to have one secret key and that secret key would be required for the encryption and decryption as well. So the scenario is Alice wants to communicate a plain text to Bob and Alice would never want to send a plain text over the insecure channel because then it will be prone to attacks like a snooping attack. Therefore Alice needs to have an uh, encryption algorithm and with respect to encryption algorithm we already have discussed about Kirchhoff's principle which says that you have to assume that everybody, every adversary, every hacker, intruder knows about the algorithms that are existing and therefore the secrecy of the message or the ciphertext is all dependent on the secrecy of the keys. Therefore keys should be exchanged in a very secured manner and calculation of these keys should not be an easy task. One should not be able to judge what keys you are using for the encryption and decryption. All right. So you need to have some secret keys that you are exchanging among Alice and Bob or the two communicating parties through some secure channel. The calculation of the ciphertext is with the help of the formula that you encrypt the plain text with the help of the key that you have exchanged with the Bob. Fine. Now once the ciphertext has been calculated, that ciphertext will be moving from the insecure channel. So once it reaches the Bob, now Bob has to feed the ciphertext into the decryption algorithm and it does so. So you need a decryption algorithm and on that decryption algorithm you have to apply the secret key that you have shared with the Alice and that secret key would help in the calculation of the plain text back. So and this is pretty much represented by the formula over here that this P is generated with the help of the decryption algorithm applied by the shared secret key onto the ciphertext that has been received by the Bob. All right. So the secure exchange of these keys is one aspect of this course and we will be talking about it when we are discussing about the key distribution thing. Right. Our initial focus would be about the encryption algorithms that uses a common secret key to encrypt and decrypt the plain text and the ciphertext respectively. One key property over here is that if you are encrypting any plain text by the encryption algorithm and you apply a decryption algorithm over it, you will be getting the plain text back. How many number of symmetry keys are required? When Alice wants to send a message to Bob, it needs to have just one shared secret, suppose K1, fine. If there are three entities, suppose Z has also came in. Now A and Z require another key, suppose that is K2 and B and Z for communication require another key, suppose that is K3, fine. This means that A when wants to communicate to everybody else except himself, he need to have a separate key for communication. A similar goes for B and Z as well. When Z wants to communicate with A, it has got a different shared secret. When Z wants to communicate to B, it has got a different shared secret. So if there are three entities, so every entity will be communicating to three minus one entities, that is two entities. So three minus one will give you two and all the three people need to have the two keys. Therefore, total number comes out to be six. But since it is a shared secret between two people, therefore divided by two. So this will give you the result three. That means three keys are required when three people wants to communicate to each other. That is one scenario. Let's look at another scenario. If there are four people, A, B, C, D. A wants to communicate to B, D, C. So it gets K1, K2, K3. B wants to communicate to D, it gets K4. B to C, it's K5. D can talk to B4 by using the same key K4. 
can talk to A by K2 and will need K6 to talk to C. And C when wants to talk to A, it's K3, K5 for B and K6 for D, right? So everybody needs to have a key to talk to every other person. Therefore, if there are four people, then each of these four people require four minus one keys, but the key is shared between two people. So it is divided by two, which gives you the result. Two into three is six and there are six, six keys. Therefore, there is a general formula that if there are n p m people, then m into m minus 1 divided by 2 will give you the number of keys. Let us see if it is true for 5. So, if m equals to 5, so the result should come out to be 5 cross 4 upon 2 that is equals to 10. So, this is my third scenario that there are 5 people a, b, C, D, E. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 keys are required and now everybody is connected to every other person. So, the formula for the calculation of the number of symmetric keys is m into m minus 1 by 2, where m is the number of people who are communicating to each other. For symmetric key distribution, because two people are sharing a secret information, we said in the previous slide that you need to have a secure mechanism or secure channel for the sharing of this key. So, a few methods that could be employed is that you go to the person and tell them the key face to face. Other could be that you need some other algorithms, encryption algorithms, maybe asymmetric key algorithms and you pass on the key to the other party or you can have a trusted third party. As we had seen uh, in the case of non-repudiation, there is a third party and that third party can even help you in exchanging the keys between the two people. And when third party is uh, introduced, so third party, since it is a trusted system, so authenticity of the two people who are communicating can also be proved with the help of that third party.